pay attention. Pay attention to every attack that you endure and everything that you suffer. Pay close attention because the Father wants us to do that. In the time that you're down at your weakest moment and you're in the valley of tears and in the valley of the shadow of death and all you can see is the battle. Don't be the warrior that's in the battle too long that you have forgotten the reason why you were in the battle in the first place. You were there because God called you and you are chosen of God to be a holy priesthood and a holy nation, a holy people set aside from everyone else. Come out from among them, my people, and be ye separate. Because God has separated the light from the darkness. Now, something that I want you to pay close attention to. Now, we're all been under attack, and we're not ignorant to Satan's devices. That's certainly true. That we know this enemy is going to come after us as long as that the light is shining within us. He sees us as his enemy, and he is the enemies of God. Now, he comes after us, and we feel like, because that's what the devil wants us to see, is that he is provoking us to spiritual wickedness, and we are being tempted with evil. We know that God is not tempting us with evil because God cannot be tempted with evil. So, the devil is trying to draw us out. That's the first thing he has to do. He has to tempt you first and draw you out. And then, if we move in that temptation, move in our flesh, then he has us where he wants us. But we've all been steadfast in the faith. Amen, church? We've been right there where God needed us to be. We might have said a little things that we shouldn't have said, but remember Christ. When he saw that they were spying and selling in the house of God, the Bible says, be angry, but sin not. He was angry. It was righteous anger. And he overturned the tables. And he whipped those that were selling and buying in the house of God. And he said, you have made my father's house a house of prayer, a den of thieves. Jesus had righteous anger. And overthrew the tables. Now. This is what we're to pay attention to. One day, we may be under attack, and that's the time that God is watching you and I. That's the most crucial time of your entire walk with God. That's the time that God and all the witnesses in heaven are watching. Oh, they're not watching you when you're up there on the mountain top, and you're blessed of God. And everything's a going your way and you're full of the anointing oil and you're refreshed by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost and your cup is overflowing with the new wine. Praise God, glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. That's a good day to be alive, amen, church, to be right there under the fountain of water, of living water of life. Receiving the anointing of the Holy Ghost. As we can feel Him being poured out upon us. Now that's a blessed day indeed. But that's not the day God's watching. God is watching the day when you're in the valley of tears. When you've done cried and you have shed so many tears, you believe you can't cry another tear. Church, I know what I'm talking about. I've been there too many times, too many times. And when you walk in the valley of the shadow of death, never forget that Jesus is walking with you. That's the time God's going to look at you. That's the time God is watching. That's the time all of the witnesses in heaven are watching. They're watching to see that all that butter and honey on the bread we've been eating and the meat in due season, and with all of the instructions of the Holy Spirit, we should have known better to how to fight that good fight of faith. That's the time God's watching. 
He's watching to see if you've learned anything. Because the Holy Spirit of God is our guide. He is our teacher. He is our leader. And he will lead us and guide us and teach us. Your steps are ordered by God. We quote those scriptures. But have that word become life to us. That it has been quickened within us. You see, I want to be that soldier that takes immediate action. That I know what to do in all seasons. Because the armor is for all seasons. For every weather, whether the day be sunny and blessed of God or the day be raining and there's storms coming your way and bolts of lightning are coming. Did you notice something, church? The desert place is blossoming. The places that were desert, and I'm not playing with you. I'm not kidding you in any way. This is Bible prophecy, and it's unfolding right now that the desert is a bloom, and it is green, and it is beautiful telling you the truth now we know that season so we know that's prophetic word that was prophesied and it is unfolding and coming to pass that should make you and I that much more determined to stand in faith trusting and believing in the power of our God and win the victory through our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ because everything we suffer is to make us who we are, to make us stronger. God did not bring you this far to see you fall, to see you give up, to see you quit, to hear you moaning and groaning and complaining. He brought you this far to show you what is truly within you, the strength of the grace of God that he poured out upon our heads and has anointed our foreheads with oil of the seal of redemption from the Holy Spirit of God through the blood of the Lamb of God. Now, God has blessed us. And all he's asking you and I to do is stand. Stand in faith. Trust God. Have faith in God. Believe in God and the power of God. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And we're not going to lose anyone in this army because we are all united together in faith and we are all in one accord waiting for the empowerment of the Holy Ghost as he is preparing us for the days that are coming and the dangers of this world and through advanced technology that is right around the corner. I've been warning you since 2011 by the power of the Holy Ghost of the advanced technology and how the son of perdition needs this technology. He can't show himself to be a God to the nations without it. He needs the serpent's rod of lying signs and deceptions. And he will receive all his powers from the devil himself because he is the man of sin that there is no redemption for him he is the damned he is predestined to be cast alive in the lake of fire predestined to be damned but we are predestined by the father our names are written in the Lamb's book of life, slain from the foundation of the world. We are the redeemed of the Lord. God has called us to better things. Amen? So, the next time, this is something I want you to pay attention to because I always pay attention to every attack because to me it's a big deal. It's something that the Holy Spirit always reminds me, pay attention. So as I was paying attention to not only my attacks, but Brother Preston's. Brother Preston is under attack right now. He is in deep despair and depression. He didn't even want to call me. He just texted me to share with him, wanted me to know what was going on and wanted me to stand with him in prayer, trusting and believing in the power of God. And I said, I'm on it, Brother Preston. It is done and done in Jesus Christ's most holy name. God is going to deliver you with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. And uh, we are not only praying for Brother Preston, but all of those that are under attack from the spirit of depression and oppression. We are binding that enemy, casting him out in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, this was what the Holy Spirit of God wanted me to pay attention to. 
And this is exactly what he said to me, and I'm going to say it to you word for word as he said it to me. He said, when you went under attack, it is nothing new to you, is it, my friend? I said, no, my Lord, it is nothing new. I have been through this many, many times. He said, this is a testing in a time of trial. This is to purge you by the fire, the refiner's fire, and you are being purged by the fire of the refiners. Every attack that you suffer and endure is a time that those in heaven are looking to see what you will do. Have you kept the faith? Do you remain loyal to the Father, to your King, to your Messiah? And I said, yes, my Lord, I, have, I am faithful unto death. He said, one day you seem down, but did you notice how quickly God set your feet upon the mountain of God? That once in the valley, one day upon the high mountain of God the next. Because he wants you to know that he has even shortened the days that the enemy is attacking his people. He has set limits to this enemy and he is holding him back and restraining this enemy away from the blood-bought church, which is the redeemed that has been set aside for a purpose and a plan and the will of God. He said, so pay attention to every attack that you are under. Win the victory. I no longer want you to get out the tape. You will show your father that you are more than a conqueror through your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you no longer need tape to tape your mouth up, that you are a seasoned, well-seasoned Christian. You know where to get the water when you need it. The refreshing oil is being poured out upon your head. It is running down to your very feet, and your cup is running over. And the cup that is in your hand is the cup of the wine of the New Testament and it will never stop flowing from the throne of God it is your cup take your cup and drink from this cup I said yes my Lord the wine is sweet and I thank God for the precious wine of the covenant, the blood covenant of my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. I thank God for the refreshing oil that refreshes me daily. And I thank God for the light that he has set within this vessel, that it is a light to glorify God and all of those that are lost and in a dark and desert place may see the light of God shining through this vessel and come to the light and accept my Lord and my Savior as their Lord, their King, and repent of their sins, and know how much the Father loves them, that He sent His only Son, and those that believe in Him will never die, but have everlasting life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's most holy name we pray, and let the church say amen and amen. I understood what the Lord was trying to reveal to me. I received it into my soul and my spirit today. I received every drop of oil with gladness and with great joy in my heart to know that God is preparing us for what lies ahead. Because church, we are going to see things happening that you would never imagine in all your years. When the Holy Spirit said to me, men will become beast. I'm going to tell you something. He never gets panicky when he tells me anything. But I'm going to tell you something that I've noticed. That when he does tell me, even in the calmness of the still of his sweet voice, I know that he's serious and that he is warning me of perilous and troublous times. And I'm telling you, I've seen in visions of these beast men unleashed upon America, upon Europe, and upon Israel. And they are ravenous wolves in sheep clothing. And they're coming. 
to devour and take a spoil. That enemy is moving, and he is moving very quickly. For the devil knows that his time is short, and whatever he's got to do, he's got to do quickly. And we want him to do it quickly. The quicker he moves, the faster we go home. It's all about Bible prophecy. But we know nothing moves outside of its time. God has an appointed time for everything. And everything will fall within that time, that appointed time that God has ordained it to go. And I know that to be the truth by the power of the Holy Ghost. But church, you have a blessed and victorious day today. For the wolves are coming for the sheep. But we know the hedge of protection is around us. Jesus will gather us up under his wings and hide us from this enemy. And we know that God can do that because we know by the book of Revelation 12, 14, and 15, that's exactly what God is going to do in the great tribulation with the remnant what is left of the woman see Jeremiah 31 and 2 that's left of the sword of that Israel, the remnant of God, will be carried, led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit of God. And he will hide them from the face of the serpent and from his army. Jeremiah 4, 46, 47. I'm sorry, church. That is Jeremiah 46, verses 7, 8, and 22. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing that word back to my remembrance. I love it how he does that. I'm telling you, I had a quick vision. While I was saying those scriptures, a vision popped before me, and I could see the word of God. And it was like I was looking at Jeremiah 46, 7, 8, and 22. Ain't he amazing? That's how he works. And when he moves, I move with him. Amen. Church, Egypt's army is coming into Jerusalem like a flood. And it will take God to hide the remnant. Because if he did not hide the remnant of the woman's seed that's left of war and shortened the days of the great tribulation, there would be no seed, no flesh of the woman left. For the devil would devour them. Because after all, they are the serpent's meat. The dust is the serpent's meat. And our flesh is dust. But today we are on the mountain of God. And we have been refreshed with the refreshing oil of the Holy Spirit of God. We know our mission. And we're going to hold true to what God has called us to do. We are faithful to our call. And we are all servants of God to do his will and his work in this field. Amen. God bless you, my dear precious friends in Jesus Christ. Most holy name we pray and let the church say amen and amen. I love you, my dear precious friends, and I thank God for each and every one of you. What a blessing you are to the body of Jesus Christ that has called you into his glorious light. Amen. Amen.